This video is about parametric, or parameterized, surfaces. Recall that a parametric curve r of t equals x of t, y of t, z of t gives the x, y, and z coordinates of points on the curve in terms of another variable, t. A parametric surface, r of uv equals x of uv, y of uv, z of uv, gives the x, y, and z coordinates of points on the surface in terms of two parameters, u and v. I've graphed the parametric surface given by this equation below. In this graph, the x-axis runs in this direction, the y-axis is back here, and the z-axis goes straight up. What curves do we get if we fix v to be a constant and vary u? For example, if we set v equal to 0, we get r of u0 is u cosine 0, u sine 0, 0, which simplifies to u0, 0, 0. That's a line that runs in the x direction with y and z equal to 0, so it's a line that goes along the x-axis. If instead we set v equal to pi over 4, r of u pi over 4 is u cosine pi over 4, u sine pi over 4, pi over 4, which simplifies to square root of 2 over 2u, square root of 2 over 2u, pi over 4. That's a line at constant height, pi over 4, and since the x-coordinate equals the y-coordinate, we're lying along the line y equals x at height pi over 4. So that looks like this line right here. Let's do one more. If we set v equal pi over 2, we get the following expression. That's 0 u pi over 2. So it's a line that goes in the y direction at constant height pi over 2. So when we fix v to be a constant, we're getting these constant height lines that are going straight out from the z-axis, kind of like steps on our staircase. If instead we set u to be a constant, so let's set, for example, u equal to 0, then we get r of 0v, which is 0 cosine v, 0 sine v, v, so that's just heading up the z-axis. If instead I set, say, u equal to 1, I get r of 1v, so that's going to be 1 cosine v, 1 sine v, v. If I set u equal to 2, that's going to be 2 cosine v, 2 sine v, v. Both of those are spirals heading up the staircase. The curves of constant u and constant v are called grid curves. And they can be a good way to help identify or visualize a parametric surface. In the previous example, we were given a surface that was already parameterized. But sometimes we want to find a parameterization for a surface that's given to us in Cartesian coordinates. That is, we want to rewrite x, y, and z in terms of two new variables, u and v. One common way to do this is to use a copycat parameterization. That means we let two of our variables from x, y, and z just copy or equal u and v. In this example, it's natural to make y and z copy u and v, so I'll set y equal to u and z equal to v, although I could do them in the opposite order. That's because x is already solved for in terms of y and z, so now I can just write x in terms of u and v as x equals u squared plus v squared. So my parameterization r of uv is equal to u squared plus v squared u v. Since u squared plus v squared is my x, u is my y, and v is my z. But anytime I see a variable squared plus another variable squared, I start thinking about sine and cosine, like polar coordinates. And that gives another alternative way to parameterize this surface. So I'm going to set y equal to r cosine theta, 
and z equal to r sine theta. And now I know that x, which is y squared plus z squared, is r cosine theta squared plus r sine theta squared, which simplifies to just r squared. Putting this all together, I have my parameterization in terms of r and theta is, let's see, x is just r squared, y is r cosine theta, and z is r sine theta. If I want to rewrite this in terms of u and v, which might be a good idea because having r mean two different things in two different places is a bit confusing, then I can just write this as, let's see, r becomes my u. So this is u squared, u cosine v, u sine v. In the first parameterization, the copycat parameterization, there were no restrictions on u and v. u and v could just be anything from negative infinity to infinity. In fact, I need all those values to cover the entire paraboloid. In the second parameterization, I only need r to range from 0 to infinity and theta to range from 0 to 2 pi to cover the whole surface. In other words, u, which is functioning as my r, is going to be from 0 to infinity, and v is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. As a final example, let's parameterize the hemisphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 9 with y greater than or equal to 0. Since we only have y greater than or equal to 0, it's possible to solve for y and then use the copycat parameterization. We have y squared is 9 minus x squared minus z squared, so y is plus or minus the square root of 9 minus x squared minus z squared, but since we assume that y is positive, we only have the plus version. Now we can set x to copy u, z to copy v, and we have y is the square root of 9 minus u squared minus v squared. So that gives, this gives us the parameterization r of uv is, let's see, x is u, y is the square root of 9 minus u squared minus v squared, and z is v. It's a bit tricky to put bounds on my parameters u and v in this example. It's true, since we're talking about a sphere of radius 3, that u is between negative 3 and 3, and v is between negative 3 and 3, but I don't have that whole rectangle on the uv plane at my disposal for parameterizing the hemisphere. Instead, the projection on the hem of the hemisphere onto the uv plane, which is the xz plane, is really just going to be a circle of radius 3. So a better way to describe the domain for the parameterization is the set of uv such that u squared plus v squared is less than or equal to 9. The copycat parameterization works just fine for this example, but because we're talking about a hemisphere, it's also natural to use spherical coordinates. The spherical coordinates of a point are given by rho, phi, and theta, where rho is the distance of the point from the origin, phi is the angle from the positive z axis, and theta is just the same theta as in polar coordinates, if we project the point onto the xy plane, then theta is the angle made to the positive x-axis. Recall the equations to convert between rho, phi, and theta and x, y, and z. We have x equals rho sine phi cosine theta, y equals rho sine phi sine theta, and z equals rho cosine phi. But we don't need all three of these variables, rho, phi, and theta, to describe a two-dimensional surface. We should only have two parameters. And in fact, since the radius of our sphere is always 3, our rho is always 3. And so we can use just phi and theta as our parameters and write x equals 3 sine phi cosine theta, y equals 3 sine phi sine theta, z equals 3 cosine phi. I'll put this in vector notation. Now to find bounds on my parameters phi and theta, notice that since I'm only looking at the hemisphere where y is positive, I'm over here, theta is just going to range between 0 and pi. Phi also ranges from 0 
up here at the top of the hemisphere, all the way to pi down at the bottom. If I prefer to write my parameters as u and v instead of phi and theta, I can just replace phi everywhere with u and theta everywhere as v. And that completes my parameterization. In this video, we talked about parametric surfaces, how to visualize them using grid curves, and how to parameterize them using copycat parameterization, polar parameterization, and spherical parameterization. Recall in the spherical parameterization, we use spherical coordinates, but we set rho equal to a constant. It's also possible to use cylindrical coordinates to parameterize a surface. For example, a good way to parameterize an actual cylinder is to use cylindrical coordinates and set r equal to a constant. Which of these and other methods you use depends on the surface you're given. And in many cases, you'll have several options to choose from.